Hey, what's up everybody? This is Lee from Adventure FPV, and today I got a chance to take the Avada out to do a little bit of cruising with it. I got the drone about five or six days ago. I haven't had a chance to really take it out and cruise in manual mode. I've done a little bit of flying, just some testing. I did some indoor flying, but today I threw it in manual mode, took it to a local park, and just wanted to see how she did. I'm actually pretty impressed with how this drone flies so far, you know, keeping in mind that this is a Cinewhoop. Um, Cinewhoops aren't really meant to do any sort of crazy freestyle or acrobatics. I mean, you can to a certain point, but that's not really what their design is for. Um, so there are some limitations. There are There is some prop wash handling issues when you come down quickly. But um, otherwise, I mean, if you keep in mind that it is a Cinewhoop and you fly it like that, it flies really good. Um, I've tried flying it in normal and sport mode. I think normal mode would be great great for you know indoor tight quarters flying stuff like that but today like I said I wanted to put it in manual mode and just kind of rip it around a little bit and it flies really nice uh, the footage that you're looking at right now is processed with gyro flow so you have to film in the wide lens profile and make sure that electronic image stabilization is turned off and then you can process it through gyro flow uh, and actually if you're having issues processing long video files because it's split up into multi files in gyro flow uh, uh, check out this other video I just made about how to resolve that issue. But yeah, I mean, this thing cruises really well. Uh, I did do a little bit of acro on a separate pack with this. Um, one time I did have an issue that said gimbal limit exceeded. It actually happened to me twice. I was kind of doing a slow pitch forward, kind of a flip over something. And both times I attempted it, the drone put itself into normal mode. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research on that and see what had happened because the third and fourth time I tried it, it didn't happen. But so far this thing cruises really nice. It banks really well. I, I, I think that the roll access is a little awkward when you're doing uh, normal mode. I think it's just not really tuned in very well. It kind of rolls really rapidly and it pitches back to its normal position in kind of an awkward way. But when you do it in manual mode and you use gyro flow, uh, it actually works out pretty well. Uh, one thing I've noticed about the controller and the feel of it that I don't really like, I think the sticks are too short uh, for what I like. I like it to be a little bit longer, so I did go ahead and order some extensions. And now here, I did a little bit of a dive and I took everything, yep, everything I had to not smash into the ground. It was 100% stick there. So like I said, knowing that it is a Cinewhoop and that style of drone, and it's not really meant for doing crazy dives and things like that, I think if you plan a little bit better, um, you'd be able to not smash into the ground. So it's gonna take a little bit of practice to get used to it, but it is a cool drone. I'm honestly thinking of this as like uh, the best, like all in one vacation drone because you can, it's small, the goggles are small, the controller is small, so you can fit it into a little package. When I go on vacation, I always bring a drone with me, but since I started flying FPV, now I have to bring two drones. I bring a camera drone and then I bring FPV drones just to get different styles of shots for my vacation videos. This drone might actually end up being like a perfect compromise for those types of videos where, you know, it's not like a professional thing. You just wanna have something cool, this might, be able to get you some like high up establishing shots um, of a city or a location where you're at, but you could also get these cool like center whoop shots where you're showing a destination down low, you're kind of zipping through things, um, but it might also be able to do things like dives, like if you want to dive a building or something. So I'm going to kind of test that out and see if this may be a good all-in-one replacement if I just want to travel light with one drone and not everything, this might be the perfect package. But, you know, I, I do notice that there are some issues. I, I see some banding in the sky, a little bit of uh, a glitching on the grass, like the bit rate or, or something with the sharpening isn't just quite right. It's not quite as good as the GoPro in my opinion, but it's pretty darn close, especially if you're not doing something that is professional that they're expecting, you know, some sort of perfection with it. Um, you could probably get away with using this, especially if it's just a home family vacation video. I'm hoping DJI also puts out some firmware updates that will give us a little more flexibility. Uh, I am filming in manual mode. Uh, all of my settings are locked into manual. Unfortunately, I don't have an ND filter. And for me, I always fly with an ND filter. 100% of the time, if it's daylight, I'm flying with an ND filter. So I had to adjust the shutter speed to one over 1000 in order to not get blown out highlights. So I think that's another factor here too with the video quality. Once I have an ND filter, I'm able to dial back my shutter speed. It's gonna make a little bit of a difference the way the shutter uh, affects the footage as well. 
So flying through like this structure here too, I was fairly confident. I do see that there was like some wires and ropes and things hanging down through here and I did inspect it before we flew over here. So, you know, I was fairly confident that there was nothing in my view uh, with the higher quality video downlink, but of course a little nervous when you're flying a brand new quad somewhere like that. So, but yeah, I overall, like I said, this thing is a lot of fun to fly. Uh, I think I ended up getting almost about a 10 minute flight time out of it, which is great. Um, that's more than I'm going to do on my other Cinewoops using a LiPo battery, but not if I'm using a Lion battery. If I'm using a Lion battery, I can get about the exact same flight time. So there's really nothing that impressive about the flight time uh, that blew my mind. But, you know, it did give me plenty of flight time and I felt like I was ready to land when I came back and landed. So I think this could be a really great FPV drone if you're looking to get into the hobby. If you're looking to fly in manual mode, I mean, I think it would be great if you could learn in the sport mode and all of that to get used to the goggles and how it looks to fly. It's kind of a nice safety net to get you into the hobby, but I also think it could be a pretty uh, a big crutch that you would be leaning on um, when it came time to actually make the switch to building your own drones and things like that. So. I don't know. I, I think it's a good stepping stone if you have the budget to, if you want to get into FPV and you have the budget to buy this drone and then six months from now upgrade and buy all the other equipment, that's great. Um, or if you just want to fly it in manual and sport mode and get that first person viewer experience, I think it's pretty cool too. But you know, me, I came from camera drones and then I went to FPV. So this is kind of like a mix in the middle for me somewhere. I know DJI products uh, in the FPV space get a lot of hate, but I mean, honestly, I think it's great that they're doing stuff to innovate the hobby. Um, it's not my favorite drone to fly by any means, but there are so many cool features on this drone that are just next level that no other company is doing. So you gotta give kudos to DJI for that. I also ended up filming this in the normal profile. The first couple of videos I shot with this was with the D Cinelike and it looks good. I just wanted to try the normal settings, see how it turned out. It is pretty saturated, pretty contrasty. One thing I'm not super happy about right now on the firmware is there's no adjustment for sharpness. I feel like this camera is way too sharp. Um, you can always easily add sharpening in post-production, but it's almost impossible to remove sharpening from your footage. So I prefer to stay with a low sharpened video and then add it in after the fact. So hopefully with a firmware update, we'll be able to adjust that. And I have tried flying with Rocksteady and the Rocksteady Horizon leveling, which looks great for indoor stuff, but I feel like I'm getting a better quality product when I'm running it through Gyroflow. Programs like Gyroflow and Real Steady Go have the advantage of hindsight um, and foresight, where basically they can look at where you've been, where the gyro data is going next, and then it can adjust accordingly between those two points of data and make a nice smooth transition where something like Rocksteady um, or if you use Hypersmooth on a GoPro, it's adjusting on the fly as you go and it's kind of guessing and it does a pretty dang good job, but. Uh, obviously being able to look into the future and see what your drone is going to do next is going to provide you much better stabilization. So if you haven't used Gyroflow, it is a free open source uh, software. I highly recommend you try it. Like I said, there are a few things you have to do on the drone to make sure that it's going to work. Cause if you try to bring it into Gyroflow and you had uh, Rocksteady already turned on, it is not going to work. It also only currently works with the wide lens profile. It doesn't work with the, I think, super view or super wide, whatever they call it. So it only works in that one profile. Now, another thing that's really impressed me about this drone is the range. Uh, the only place I felt like I had any sort of issue with the range is when I came down under that goal post and I was, you know, had to give it everything it had. I think I was just so close to the ground that it kind of said, where are we for a second? It kind of blipped out. That was the only spot where I felt like there was some sort of a, a, a problem with the range. I will definitely keep testing and flying this drone, let you guys know what I think about it as time goes on. It is definitely not going to be a direct replacement for my other Cinewoops at the moment. And it's definitely not gonna replace my five inches or obviously a seven inch or anything like that for mountain diving and long distance and cruising. But man, this drone really is a lot of fun. If you're thinking about getting one and you have the budget, I would highly recommend it. There will be an affiliate link down in the description.